Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong and this is Pointless, the quiz show where high scores count for nothing and obscurity counts for everything. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> so, welcome, Dawn and Ross. You're our first pair on today's show. Uh, how do you two know each other? Hi, um, this is my son and I've known him for 21 years. <laughs> and he did come six weeks early. Six and weeks early? Yes, and he's been late ever since. Been late? <laughs> uh, yeah. We've had two that came three weeks early. Six weeks early? Six yeah. weeks. Yeah. That's, that's not... It's not too scary, six weeks no. early. I just wanted it? to get away from her as soon as possible, really. Oh, Ross, <laughs> come now. That, you need Ooh. a bit of teamwork, a bit more team <laughs> spirit there. Welcome to the show and the very best of luck this afternoon. And welcome to John and Claire. You are our second team on the show. How do you two know each other? Hi, Alexander. Uh, this is Claire, my older sister. And where have you come from? From Manchester. From Manchester. What do you do, John? Uh, I work in insurance, unfortunately. Which bit of insurance? Uh, claims. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> and Claire, how about you? Uh, I'm about to start working in a hospital. Well, very best of luck to you this afternoon. And welcome back to Chris B and Chris W. Hi. The Chris's. You were on the show last time. We gave everyone two chances to reach the final, and this is your last chance. Remind us how you did. Well, last time we did very well. We got to the head-to-head, -head, but we were pipped at the post, and frankly, it was all due to a certain dessert, which I shall not be eating again. Who would have thought there was water in creme caramel? I know. I Bizarre. think Delia's just wrong, frankly. I think what, her what recipe does she know, needs to be frankly. corrected. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Today, though, I reckon finalists. That's what I reckon. <laughs> anyway, let's see what happens. Welcome back to Alex and Andrea. You were on the show as well last time. Remind us how you did. Um, well, in the first round, Andrea took a risk mm -hmm. to try and get us a pointless answer. Unfortunately, it was a gamble that ultimately didn't pay off. Michael Stick. Michael Stick. Michael Stick. We, he, um, we should actually go and beat him with a stick. <laughs> but... Do you know what? He was, he was world number two. He was. That's he was his fault, two. not yours. His <laughs> fault. He could just have played a little bit better. I know. You'd be fine. <laughs> well, very best of luck to you. We'll find out more about all of you throughout the show. But that just leaves me with one person to introduce. He's the man who knows everything. It's my pointless friend. It's Richard. Hello. How are you? I'm very, very well. How are you this afternoon? I'm extremely well. That's good. We've got a great show. We've got a brilliant returning pair, the two Chrises. They were very, very strong last time. And, uh, of course, two new pairs as well. And the first question today is one of those... It's going to be an explosive, incendiary question. Really look out for it. It's, uh, it's an absolute blockbuster of a category. It's a belter. I, is it? Yeah. yeah. It really, I'm, not, I'm not even being sarcastic. It's extraordinary. I can't wait. I don't even know what it is. Right, we have put all our questions to 100 people before the show, but this is pointless, so we are after the obscure answers that they didn't get. The fewer people who got the answer, the fewer points awarded, the better chance of winning. To stay in the game with a chance to win our jackpot, all our players need to do is score as few points as they possibly can. But what everyone's trying to do, of course, is find a pointless answer. That's an answer that none of our 100 people gave, and each time this happens, we will add £250 to the jackpot. Nobody won the jackpot last time, so we add another £1,000 to that. So today's jackpot starts off at £2,250. <laughs> Very good. OK, let's play pointless. So in the first round, each of you must give me one answer and you cannot confer with your partner. Whichever team has the highest score at the end of the round will be eliminated. OK, your category for the first round is fashion. Can you decide in your pairs who's going to go first and who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what the question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many types of hat <laughs> yeah. as they could. Richard. Richard, Richard. Ooh, I know, it's, uh, it's quite something, isn't it? Uh, if, you, if you listen up, what we're looking for in this round, all the correct answers, are types of hat. <laughs> or cap. That's hat or cap are the correct answers. OK. OK, let's do this, let's do this. Gather ourselves a bit. <laughs> OK, so in this round, we're going to give you a choice of seven possible answers on the board in each pass. The first set of seven answers reads like this. Boater, Geisel, Pillbox, Trilby, Gainsborough, Busby, Sombrero. Boater, Geisel, Pillbox, Trilby, Gainsborough, Busby, 
sombrero. Well, I can tell you that at least one of those answers is pointless, but do be very, very careful because there's also at least one incorrect answer among the seven. Pick one of those and you'll score the maximum of 100 points. Dawn and Ross, you all drew lots before the show today. You get to go first. As always, we are looking for the most obscure answers, the answers that will score you the fewest points. There's quite a few I haven't heard of. I'm going to try, because I think I've heard of it, a pillbox. A pillbox? Yes. Let's see if it is correct, and if it is, let's see how many people said it. Pillbox. It's right. It's a oh. great answer, Dawn. It's a type of hat, a pillbox hat, and it scores you four. Richard. Uh, yeah, very good answer, Dawn. It's a small, sort of straight-sided lady's hat, a pillbox. John, remember, we are looking for types of hats. Types of hats. Oh, what do you think? Well, what do you think? Look, there are six left on the board for you. There's still I've, a pointless in there. I haven't actually heard of most of them. Um, I'm going to have to take a guess, really, and I will go for... Oh, dear. Look at that. <laughs> Sorry. Looking terrified. Um, a guess? Geisel. You're going to go for Geisel? Yeah. What sort of hat would you imagine a geisel to be, if it's a hat? Um, a nice one. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Oh, that, that little corner of the hat spectrum. Nice OK, hats, yeah. OK. The night, one of the nice hats. <laughs> geisel. There it is, one from the top. Let's see if it is indeed a hat. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Geisel. Oh! Geisel is not a type of hat. No. I can't believe it. It's a wrong answer. It means you score the maximum of 100 points. Richard Geisel. Yeah, I'm sorry about that, John. Theodore Zeus Geisel is, uh, is Dr Zeus, who wrote the cat in the hat. Ah. But he's not a type of hat. <laughs> See, even things that aren't hats are good. Yeah. <laughs> if they're hats, it's good. If they're not hats, it's exciting. We should call this show Who Wants to Be a Milliner? <laughs> I do. <laughs> Ah, oh, bad luck, John, but still fun. Chris W, we're looking for types of hat. What do you think? I can tell you there's still a pointless answer on that board. Uh -huh. There may not even be any incorrect answers. Of course, there may still be an incorrect answer. Who knows? Right. Um, well, I know for definite that there are hats up there that I know for sure. Um, weighing up which one of those is likely to have got the fewest answers, I would say Trilby. OK, you're going to go for Trilby. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Trilby. It's right. <laughs> 42. Mm. 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 You're hoping Trilby might do a bit more yeah, for you. Yeah, hoping it might be a bit, bit less than Trilby. that. Trilby. So. Mm. <laughs> oh, well, 42, it's, it's better than 100. Richard? It is better than 100. It's a very popular hat to the Trilby. All hats are popular, aren't they? Aren't they? Everybody <laughs> loves hats. Uh, it's named after a 19th century play in which the, uh, the lead character wore what became the Trilby. We're looking for types of hat. Andrea. Hello, my love. Andrea, hello, hello. Now, look, on the board there are four types of hat. We've already had one incorrect answer. I don't know if that lessens the chance of there being another incorrect answer there. Who knows? If I take a risk, will you say, if it's right, hat's the way to do it? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I won't. I won't do it. <laughs> I'm going to say Gainsborough. That, I think, is a very smart answer. I don't know. He may just be a painter. I hope not. <laughs> Let's see if it's right, though. And if it is, I think it's going a long way down. I'll keep my fingers crossed. You should. Gainsborough. Let's see how many people said it. It's right, Andrea. I'm further. Die. Die. It's that one. Oh, God. Hats <laughs> off to you, Andrea. It's a pointless answer, and it adds £250 to today's jackpot. It takes our total up to £2,500. And it scores you nothing. Richard. Did you say hats off? Yes, I did. Isn't that rubbish? That's all right. It just means no, all I've got left is... What did you say? Hats the way to do it? Did you say? Hats the way well, to do it. You said it. <laughs> yeah. Hats the, hats the way to do it. Thanks, Richard. <laughs> the Gainsborough. So a, a wide-brimmed woman's hat. Let's take a look at the other answers. Uh, we've already got... There was only one pointless and one wrong answer there. So a sombrero, obviously. 
a Spanish hat, that would have scored you 20. The Bota, much loved of public school boys and the like, would have scored you 8. And the Busby, which is uh, from the Hungarian Hussars, that would have scored you 1 point. would have been a very good answer. Thank you very much, Richard. OK, well, we're halfway through the round, so let's take a look at the scores as they stand. John and Claire on 100 there. <laughs> Alex and Andrea. Look at that. Look at that with your, with your Gainsborough. <laughs> Fantastic answer there. Brilliant, Dawn and Ross. Excellent play. Ross, try and do better than your mum, even if you can, <laughs> on the next pass. Chris B, not bad, but see if you can answer cannily on the next pass and keep a nice low score of CSFs through to the second round. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, we're going to put seven more answers on the board. We're looking for types of hat, just in case you'd forgotten. Our second list of seven reads like this. Top, bearskin, Panama, fedora, toque, cicata, pileus. Top, bearskin, Panama, fedora, toque, cicata, pileus. Again, I can tell you that at least one of those answers is pointless, and there is also at least one incorrect answer amongst those, so do avoid them. Right, Alex. You are the low scorers. You have nothing on your scoreboard. To avoid overtaking the high scorers, Claire and John, you have to score 99 or less with your answer. Takes the pressure off a bit, doesn't it? It does. I'm going to go for one which I think is, is a hat, but maybe people don't know it. Um, so I'm going to choose Panama. Panama. Yeah. OK, remember, we were looking for types of hat. You are saying Panama. There's your red line. Doesn't have to come down far to see you through to the next round. Let's see how many people said Panama. Well, it is correct. Wow. <laughs> Only 13 people said Panama, giving you 13 and a total of 13. Yeah, very well done. Very low scoring, I think, uh, Panama. Yeah. Of course, you know what country the Panama hat comes from? Uh, Holland. <laughs> Ecuador. Does it really? Yeah, it does come from Ecuador, yeah. And a proper Panama hat rolls up, doesn't it? It should, should be, be able, able to roll, roll it up, up and it should be able to bring, get its shape back immediately, yeah. Chris B, you are on 42. You have to score 57 or less to avoid becoming the high scorers. Remember, we are looking for types of hat. On that board, look, there are six hats for you to choose from. I'm going to play again a little bit safe and just hope it's not had too many people say it. I'm going to go for bearskin. You're going to go for bearskin. All right, there's your red line. Come below that red line through to the next round. Let's see if bearskin is the right answer, and if it is, how many people said it? <laughs> through to round two. <laughs> An excellent answer. Pat on the back from Chris Wills. That scores you four, bringing your total up to 46. Bearskin. Yeah, bearskin, of course, worn by uh, all of the, the guards outside the royal palaces. Of course, so famously, whatever you do to them, they're not allowed to move a muscle. They're very much like the English defence at the World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> so you can provoke them all you like, they won't. They're staying exactly where they are, rooted to the spot. Ah, <sighs> where were we? It's these, too exciting. Hats, you these see? Hats. hats. It's they, just a. It's, they keep on giving, don't they? Don't they? They it's, keep on it's giving. It's fecund. Oh, there's, there's nothing they can't do. <sighs> there's nothing. You can pull rabbits out of them. <laughs> People will be wearing them next. <laughs> So, Claire, so, Claire, look at that list. Look, there are five things left on it. Some possibly a little bit baffling, mm -hmm. others slightly more familiar. Yeah. You are currently on 100. Even if you score nothing, find that pointless answer, which you have to. We're still in trouble, aren't You we, might really? still be in trouble, unless Ross can pull something other than a rabbit out of a hat. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, there are two on there that I know are definitely hats but I think they might have quite high scores, and three, that I have no idea what they are. So I'm thinking, seeing as we're in a risky position, I might just completely gamble, hope one of them's a pointless, um, and I think I'll go for my favourite sounding word and go for saccata. Saccata. Quickly describe what you think a saccata looks like. I think it might be Japanese. Oh, yes. Just based on it sounds oh, Japanese. Yes. No thought process involved. For some reason, I, I had it down as sort of Latin American somehow, and oh. somewhere... Well, I don't know. Let's find out if it's a hat first, and if it is, let's see how many people said it. Sakata. <laughs> 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 
I'm Not afraid it's incorrect, <laughs> Claire. You've gone out with a bang. Uh, you've scored a maximum of 100 points there, taking your total up to 200, but a brave answer. Richard? Yeah, sorry, Claire, but you, you did have to take the risk. Harold Sakata is the man who played odd job in Goldfinger, would kill people with a steel-brimmed hat. Was he Japanese? He was Latin American. No, he was Japanese, yeah. <laughs> so you were, you were right in I many Japanese. ways. You were yeah. right in so many ways. OK, Ross, whatever happens, you can't lose. You'll never overtake Claire and John's high score of 200. I'm thinking going along the lines of... Yeah, talk. Let's go for talk. Talk or toke? Toke, if you will. OK, you're going to go for toke. Let's see if it's correct. And if it is, I just have a hunch it might go all the way down. How many people said toke? It's right, Ross. It's getting better and better. Two! Oh. Fantastic score. Sadly, not pointless, but two is great. Gives you a total of six. Richard? Yeah, the toque. It's a straight-sided, brimless hat. It's most famous these days. The toque blanche is the, the hat that chefs wear. The big high one. Let's take a look at the rest of the board. We've had the only wrong answer there, Sakata. So, top hat. as so a hat would have scored you 65. Uh, the fedora, famously worn by Indiana Jones, 20. And so, the pointless answer, very well done at home if you said Pileus which is sort of a, a fez-like hat. And, you know, we've had a lot of interesting facts about hats in the last five minutes or so. But let me give you one more. The Pileus... Yeah. Yeah? It's the official doctoral hat of the University of Sussex. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. OK, thanks very much, Richard. So, at the end of round one, the losing pair with the highest score is John and Claire. Look at that, 200. At least we went out with style. You, you <laughs> sure <laughs> did. <laughs> you absolutely did. Hats not really your, your bag, are not they? Not his bag. <laughs> <laughs> no. You were taking a, take a, risk. a calculated risk. I accept responsibility. Yeah, well, I think, I think you're, you're, you're right to. You're right to, John. <laughs> anyway, fantastic to have you on the show. Sorry to lose you so early on. You will, of course, be back next time because everyone gets two chances to be in Pointless. I'm sure you'll do much, much better next time. I'm so. sorry it was hats that did for you, but thanks so much. You've been great contestants. For the remaining three pairs, though, it's time for round two. <laughs> it's now time to find out which two teams will be going through to the head-to-head -head for the chance to reach the pointless final and to play for that jackpot. The category for round two is... Wines of the world. Dawn's just looking despairing. Ross looks like he needs the loo. <laughs> Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. <laughs> OK, and the question is... Wines and their countries. Wines and their countries. So, in this round, we're about to show you some wines and wine regions. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to tell us the country that they most closely are associated with. Richard. Yeah, we're going to give you the name of six wines or wine regions. You just have to tell us the country they're most associated with. The obvious ones will score a lot of points. The harder ones will score you very few points. If you give us a wrong answer, you'll score 100 points. And at home, why don't you pop out to the kitchen and see if you can get all six? <laughs> the first six are... Champagne, Stellenbosch, Dow Valley, Chianti, Hunter Valley, Retsina. Champagne, Stellenbosch, Dow Valley, Chianti, Hunter Valley, Retsina. Ross. Yes. <laughs> how many of those wines have you drunk? Um, I've drunk a lot of them, but not really paid attention to the label. OK. Um, gosh, you think it'd be a lot better at this living with her. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> it's not true. If I just go for an obvious one, can yeah. I do champagne? Y you're, you can do whichever one I'm you like, champagne. Ross. OK. Um, which would be from France. OK, champagne is from France, says Ross. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people knew that champagne was from France. <laughs> Listen, Ross, that's 16 better than 100. Don't yes. forget that. That scores you 84. Richard, champagne, Yeah, France. champagne, it's a, yes, it's a, it's a sparkling white wine. It's very nice if you ever, if you ever get the chance to taste some. It's from France. Uh, it's not in it's, just, it's a good wine. I start having Jilly Goulden sitting there. <laughs> Thanks very much, Richard. Crispy, 
We're looking for the countries that these wines come mm. from. I'm a little bit torn because I think I know two of them, but I might take a little bit of a gamble for this one. So not go for either of the two you know? No, maybe go for one that's a bit more obscure. Very good. Um, I'm going to try Stellenbosch. Very good. And say South Africa. Very good indeed. Let's see if Stellenbosch is indeed from South Africa and how many people knew that, if that's the case. It's right. Great answer. Nine people knew that. That scores you nine points. Yes, Stellenbosch is a wine region just outside Cape Town in South Africa, one of the oldest South African wine regions. Very good, Chris. Great answer, great score. Alex? Um, I actually know where the three of the remaining four are from, definitely. It's just a case of which one I go for. And I'm tempted to go for Retsina, which is from Greece, I believe. Very good. OK, well, we are looking for the countries that these wines come from. You are going to say Retsina from Greece. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, how many people knew that Retsina came from Greece? Well, it's right. <laughs> 32. <laughs> Retsina from Greece, scoring you 32 points. Yeah, uh, Retsina, very good. It's been made for over 3,000 years. Wow. And Retsina. still delivers the best hangover <laughs> you could ever wish kick, to have. It? Oh. Alex, what were the other two you knew? Um, the Hunter Valley. I've actually been in the Hunter Valley in Australia. I was there last year. Chianti is a region in Italy. And the Dow Valley. I'm not sure whether it's Chilean or Spanish. Well, let's take a little look. You're right. Chianti is Italy, but would have scored you a very high 62 points, so you did well to avoid that. But Hunter Valley, you're right. That was Australia and would have scored you 17 points. Would have been a very good answer. Uh, the Dow Valley, though, is in Portugal. Portugal. Yeah. And it was the best answer on the board. Four points. So well done if you've got Dow Valley at home. Splendid. OK, we're halfway through the round, so let's take a look at the scores. Chris B, Chris W, fantastic answer from you, Chris B. Dawn and Ross. Yes, champagne, you know, it was right. He's been to Stellenbosch in South Africa. <laughs> well, maybe he didn't drink any wine. He was I was nine. like nine at the time. <laughs> yeah. We're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, we're going to put six more wines and wine regions on the board. Here they are. Sancerre, Barolo, Liebfraumilch, Mendoza, Tokai and Rioja. Sancerre, Barolo, Liebfraumilch, Mendoza, Tokai and Rioja. Remember, we are looking for the countries that these wines are from. And you are trying to find the answer that the fewest of our 100 people knew. Right, Andrea. Oh, no, that doesn't look like a happy face to me. Even though I look like I drink, <laughs> don't drink a lot of wine. You are currently on 32. Yes. You need to score 51 or less with this answer to avoid overtaking Dawn and Ross's high score. OK, I've got a choice of two. One, I definitely know, but I'm sure it's a really high score. The other one, I'm really not sure of. Oh, help me. <laughs> um, I'm going to go for a gamble oh, and say Liebfrau milk from Germany. Here's your red line. Come below that red line and Liebfrau milk will get you through to the head-to-head. -head. Let's see if that's right and how many people said it. Liebfrau milk. Well, it is right. Mm. Okay. Quite a well-known wine, that one, evidently. 80 people said that scores you 80, takes your total up to 112. Richard Liebramil. Yeah, Liebramil. It counts for 50% of all wine exports from Germany. Chris W. Mm -hmm. Chris W. You are on nine. You cannot lose. Thanks you so cannot much, lose. Jake. Andrea and Alex <laughs> are at 112. Even if you pick something completely wrong, you'll only get up to 109. Mm -hmm. Bearing that in mind, let's have a pointless answer. Right. Uh, as in this position, I'm going to take a gamble. I think this is right. I think that Tokai is a wine from Hungary. Mm. Mm. Andrea is nodding her head, as if to say, <laughs> I know that. <laughs> <laughs> Tokai, that's what you're saying. No red line for you, you can't lose. Let's see how far Tokai will take you. Is it from Hungary? And if it is, how many people said Tokai? Well, it is correct. 
going down. Seven. The great answer, Chris Wills. That scores you seven, giving you a total of 16. Richard. Yes, well done, Chris. Tokai is a, it's an area of Hungary noted for its sweet wines. It's even mentioned in the Hungarian national anthem, Tokai. Dawn. <laughs> now then, you've been held out a lifeline by Andrea. They are on 112. You are on 84. If you can score 27 or less okay. with this, we're looking for the countries that these wines come from. One of them I, re I really like, and I'm sure it comes from this country, but I'm a little... It might be a gamble. I know definitely where two of them are from. I think I am going to gamble for the third least one I know. I know where the top and the bottom come from, but I think Barolo comes from Italy. Barolo from Italy. There it is, second one down. Very nice. <laughs> OK, well, let's hope that scores you 27 or less. Alex and Andrea are going to be watching very closely. There's your red line. Above that red line, we say goodbye to you. Below that red line, we say goodbye to Alex and Andrea. OK, you are saying Barolo from Italy. Let's see if that's correct and how many people said it. It's correct. There it goes. Yes, well done. 15. That scores you 15, giving you a total of 99. You are through to the head-to-head. -head. Richard? Yeah, very well played, Dawn. Barolo is from Italy. It's a full-blooded red wine. Do you want to have a go uh, at the rest? You drink quite heavily, don't oh, you? Oh, masses. <laughs> For, I mean, like bef before fish. work, during, after. You must know a lot about wine. Well, if only I could remember it, Richard. It's the thing. <laughs> Sancerre. France. Correct answer. Uh, Rioja. Spain. Spain, OK, they're both fairly big scores. 46 there for Rioja, 36 for Sancerre. Now, Mendoza, which is, is the lowest score of Argentinian all. wine. It is Argentina. Would have scored you five, five points. Very well points. done if you've got Mendoza. That. Brilliant. OK, well, thank you very much, Richard. At the end of round two, the losing pair with the highest score, it's Alex and Andrea. Michael Stick. And now, Liebframil. Actually, it's my own fault. If I had gone for Rioja, which was my first choice, but I thought more people would get it then. No. Yeah, you see, Lieb Prime Milk, very, very popular wine. Since I'm afraid this was your second and final chance on the show, so we say properly goodbye this time. But you've been great contestants. Thanks so much for playing. Thanks so much. <laughs> but for the remaining two pairs, things are about to get even more exciting now as we enter the head-to-head. -head. So we've already said goodbye to two teams. Now it's time to find out which of the remaining two will be playing for today's jackpot, which currently stands at £2,500. <laughs> so Chris's B&W, Dawn and Ross, you're now going to go head-to-head -head on the best of three questions. For each question, each pair needs to give me just one answer. You are now allowed to confer with your partner. All you have to do is come up with an answer that scores less than the other pair to win that question. The first pair to win two questions will be playing for today's jackpot. OK, let's play Pointless. <laughs> right, here's your first question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many UK highest peaks as they could. Richard. Yeah, we're looking for the highest peak of any of the four constituent countries of the United Kingdom. That's England, Scotland, Northern Ireland and Wales. Right, OK. Chris B, Chris W, you've played the best so far this show, so you get to go first. We are looking for the highest peak in each of the four countries, England, Northern Ireland, Scotland, Wales. Um, I would say Scaffold Pike. Scaffold Pike. Dawn and Ross. Hmm. Hmm. Um, hmm. We think that the most pointless one is going to be the Northern Ireland one or the Ireland one, but we don't know what don't it know is. Them. So, being Welsh, we'll go for we Mount Snowden. Snowden. Mount Snowden. Splendid. Chris B. Chris W. You said Scarfell Pike. Let's see how many people said that. Scarfell Pike. It's right. Good answer. 31. <laughs> Dawn. And Ross, you said Mount Snowden. Let's see how many people said that. Bad luck. After the first question, it is 1-0 to the Chris's. 
Richard. Uh, yeah, Dawn and Ross, you're right. The Northern Ireland one would have actually won it for you. The Northern Ireland's highest peak is actually a pointless answer. So very well done if you said Sleeve Donard, which is uh, in the mountains <laughs> of Morn. Uh, there's Scarfell Pike, uh, Ben Nevis on 70, and Snowden, the most popular answer of all. OK, thank you very much, Richard. Here is your second question. Chris B, Chris W, you are 1-0. If you win this question, you are through to the final, the chance to play for the jackpot. Dawn and Ross, you have to win this point to stay in the game. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Batman movies as they could. Richard? Yeah, we're looking for any movie released in the Batman franchise since the original Batman in 1989, so we won't accept the original Batman, and obviously no animated series, TV things, just the movies in the Batman franchise since Batman in 1989. OK, this time, Dawn and Ross, your turn to answer first. Are you sure? Yes. Um, we're going to say Batman Begins. Batman Begins. Yes. I've never heard of it. Never heard it's of it, new. says Dawn. Oh, because <laughs> it's new. Well, how would it be new if it begins? Because it, it just trust me. <laughs> <laughs> She's got a point. <laughs> Chris's B and W. Uh, we're going to go for Batman Forever. Batman Forever. Mm -hmm. OK, in the order they were given, Batman Begins. Let's see how many people said that. <laughs> Good answer. Okay. And the Chris's, Batman Forever. Let's see how many people said that. This, if you win it, gets you through to the final. But well, it's right. <laughs> so, well done, Dawn and Ross. Batman Begins wins that for you. After two questions, it's one apiece. Richard? Yeah, very well done, Ross. That's the way to play pointless. It's the best answer you possibly could have given, and you stuck to it, absolutely. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's take a look at all of them. There we go. Batman Begins was the very best of all. That's Christian Bale, of course. Batman and Robin would have scored you 20 points. That's George Clooney. There's Batman Forever, which is Val Kilmer, with 24. The Dark Knight, which is, of course, Christian Bale again. And right at the top there, Batman Returns, which is Michael Keaton. OK, thanks very much, Richard. Here is your third question. This is the decider. Whoever wins this point is through to the final and playing for that jackpot. OK, we gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many British Formula One world champions as they could. British Formula One world champions. Richard. Yes, we're looking for any British winner of the World Formula One Motor Racing Championship since the very first one in 1950. Chris's, you get to go first. OK, I think we're going to go for one of the older drivers, um, Sterling Moss. Sterling Moss. OK. Dawn and Ross. Oof. It's certainly not our back. No, we're going to pull this out of the but air, if anything. We're going to maybe go for one of the older ones again. What were you thinking? What sort of ones? Well, I thought Damon's dad, Graham. Graham who? Graham. <laughs> Graham Hill. <laughs> <laughs> Graham Hill, cos I... Well, I don't think it'll be, like, the... In, the okay. Lewis Hamilton That's or anything right. like that. But Graham Hill, I think, I don't know. Would you want to just take a go at that? Well, we don't yeah. know a lot more, so... We'll just go for that. We... Graham Hill. Graham Hill. <sighs> OK, you're going to go for Graham Hill. All right, in the order they were given, Sterling Moss. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, how many people said it's Sterling Moss? That's unexpected. Yeah, that's An not good. An incorrect <laughs> answer. Dawn and Ross have gone for Graham Hill. Let's see if that's correct. And if it is, how many people said it? Graham Hill. It just has to be right for you to be through to the final. That's all. It is right. <laughs> that's all it needed to be. Let's see how far down it goes, though. Oh, it's a good answer. Oh, look at that, Dawn. A fantastic answer, it turns out. Just one person knew that. After three questions, though, Dawn and Ross are through to the final 2-1, Richard. Yes, yeah, Sterling Moss, I'm afraid, guys. He, uh, he finished runner-up four times but never won a World Championships. Yet yeah, there have been ten British winners of the World Formula One Motor Racing Championship from 1950 through to 2010. Graham Hill was a very good answer, but there were three pointless answers there as well. So well done at home if you've got any of the following three. John Surtees, Jim Clark and Mike Hawthorne. There's Graham Hill on one, James Hunt with just three. 
Let's take a look at some of the bigger scores. Nigel Mansell with 13. Damon Hill, 31. Jackie Stewart. Jensen Button and Lewis Hamilton right at the top of the grid there. 51 and 54. OK, so the losing pair at the end of the head-to-head. -head. I'm afraid it's Chris and Chris. Oh, bad luck. Sterling Moss. I know. That's surprising. Very surprising indeed. Makes it worse that my brother's a Formula One journalist as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a fun job. Do you ever get to go out on assignment with him? No, um, and I don't think I will do now. <laughs> yeah. But if Sterling Moss is watching, he'll be very happy, cos... Uh... <laughs> You've done incredibly well. I'm so sorry I haven't made it onto the final and had a chance to play for the jackpot, but you have been fantastic contestants. Thanks so much. <laughs> but for Dawn and Ross, it's now time for our pointless final and the chance to win £2,500. So congratulations, Dawn and Ross, you've seen off all the competition and you have won our coveted Pointless Trophy. <laughs> That's what you came for. Now, though, you have a chance to win our Pointless Jackpot. At the end of today's show, the jackpot stands at £2,500. <laughs> there it is. Now, the rules are very simple. To win the money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer. That's one of the answers that nobody knew, OK? We've had one pointless answer on the show today. We just need one more from you for you to go home with that jackpot of £2,500. First, you've got to choose a category, and here are your three options. You can go for... Nobel Prizes, Popular Fiction, Opera. Nobel Prizes, Popular Fiction, Opera. Wait, so not, not opera. opera. <laughs> Let's just get off the list. Um, um, Ross is very good on popular fiction, I aren't think, you? I'm thinking popular fiction. But I'm... you might be on your own there because... Right. You like okay, more unpopular. So I'm prizes. the unpopular fiction, yes. yeah. And yes. I know a little bit of Nobel... We don't know like, that much about Nobel Prizes. I only know the Peace Prizes. Well, what if it's not Let's the Peace Prizes? Peace. <laughs> 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 I think we ought to go for popular fiction because then I won't get the blame. Yeah, that's true. Um, Should we go for that then? <laughs> yes. Go for popular fiction. We're going to go for popular fiction. OK, well, let's find out what the question is. <sighs> we gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many John Grisham novels as they could. John Grisham novels. Richard. Yeah, we're looking for any complete novel that's been written and published by John Grisham. We're not looking for short stories or non-fiction, just John Grisham's novels. OK, you now have up to one minute to come up with three answers. And all you need to win that £2,500 is for just one of those answers to be pointless. OK, your 60 seconds start now. OK. I know lots. Oh, good. <laughs> Go on, what are you trying to I do read a lot of John Grisham, but it depends which Can you start the... saying once? Right, the ones that... There's all the ones that are to do with courtrooms, which is the broker, the appeal, the associate, all stuff like that. OK. But I don't know, because there's a couple that... There's two... Okay, but look, I don't know if they're not what the ones he said they're not, because I don't know okay, whether well, they... which are the ones? They are not. Those ones called Oops. Skipping Christmas. Skipping Christmas. And one's You're called one's Playing for Pizza. I'm playing. Okay, they sound good. They sound good. But pizza. the other one I'd go for one of the courtroom dramas. Oh, yeah, yeah. The Brethren. I've, oh no, no. I feared the Brethren. Hang before, on. I think. A Time to Kill, because that was his first ever one. Okay, so we do a Time for Kill. A Time to Kill. A Time to Skipping Kill. Skipping Christmas. I, I hope that's it. Skipping Christmas. No, I think I've heard of the Skipping Christmas. And yeah. then we go to some sort of beach house. Is there one called the Beach House? No. 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 Okay. Skipping Christmas. Skipping Christmas. Playing Ten seconds for pizza left. and the Brethren. No. The, oh, a time to kill. A time to kill. OK, you've got your three. Right. We'll stop mm -hmm. the clock. Your three answers are <laughs> skipping Christmas. Skipping Christmas. Playing for pizza. Playing for pizza. A time to and kill. And a time to kill. Which of those do you think is your best shot at being pointless? Being pointless. Playing, Playing pizza. for pizza. Playing for we'll pizza. put that one third. Which okay. one do you think is your least likely pointless answer? A time to kill. OK, so we'll go for a time to kill, skipping Christmas and playing for pizza. Those look like three fantastic choices there. I haven't the heard of two right. of them. <laughs> OK, we are looking for John Grisham novels. This was your least confident answer. You only need one of these to be pointless for you to win that £2,500. You're going to say, a time to kill. OK, let's see how many people said, a time to kill. Well, it's right. Obviously, this has to be pointless for you to win that £2,500. As you're all the way down to zero. Time to kill. This is your first answer. Oh. Oh. 
So four people said a time to kill, so unfortunately it is not a pointless answer. But you knew it wasn't going to be a pointless answer. Uh, yeah, this it's was the first the ever uh, book. book. It bodes pretty well for the others, though, doesn't it? Well, as long as they're novels. <laughs> Well, you think they might be short stories? No, they're pretty long. I don't think they... <laughs> no, they are pretty long. Yeah, pretty lengthy short stories. <laughs> £2,500, oh. what would you do with that? I don't know. We haven't thought that we haven't far thought ahead. That far. We just we, want the trophy. We want the trophy. <laughs> <laughs> You've got the trophy. He could pay me back all the money you owe me. Uh, no chance. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, let's see if they write first. OK, mm. well, you only have two more chances yeah. to win today's jackpot. This is your second choice. Skipping Christmas. What's Skipping Christmas about? Skipping Christmas. Good. <laughs> <Got that. laughs> what, he just, what, he works through the whole, yeah. the whole festive period? It's, yeah, it's not a courtroom drama. It's a different thing altogether, so a different... Right. Mm. OK. Have you read it? Yes. Of course you I have. have, but I can't remember if it's a series of short stories or not. No, it's not, Dora. OK. Let's hope it's correct. Let's hope nobody said skipping Christmas. This has to be pointless for you to win that jackpot. Let's see how many people said skipping Christmas. It's correct. It's a correct answer. This could go a long way down, couldn't it? Skipping Christmas. It has to go down to zero for you to win £2,500. Second of three answers. It is! <laughs> Very well done indeed. Brilliant. <laughs> well, congratulations. You managed to find that all important pointless answer with your second of three answers. So you go home with a jackpot of £2,500. <laughs> Very well done. I mean, it needs, it really requires specialist knowledge, yeah. this round. I, 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 I love crime novels, so uh, John Grisham is one of my favourites. And I've, I've read nearly all the courtroom dramas, and I've done these other ones. But I couldn't remember whether they were short stories mm. or not, because I've read a couple of those as well. So. Fantastic. Ross, have you read these as well? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're a very reassuring presence, though, I have to say that, for somebody who's going, no, 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 it's not a short story, it's a novel. <laughs> I think he can go. Well, very well done. Richard, skipping Christmas. Uh, yeah, very, very good, and even better than that, playing for pizza was also a pointless oh. answer. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> But the logic was perfect, so I, I've read every single one of his legal novels, and all, there's five pointless answers here, and they're pretty much all n the non-legal ones, apart from King of Torts, that's the, only, that's the only one of his legal novels on that list. But very, very well done, fantastically played. <laughs> Thank you. Very well done. Well, thanks again to our winning contestants, Dawn and Ross, who go away with today's jackpot of £2,500. <laughs> Join us next time, and we'll be putting more obscure knowledge to the test on Pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye.